There had been before the war various attempts made to train technicians. The Institute of Physics had run a course which they called Laboratory Arts, but uh, it hadn't been taken very seriously. And after the war, various um, professional institutes and trade unions got together and held a conference in 1946 with the object of setting up some sort of uh, examination syllabuses so that uh, technicians could not only be trained but it would lead to some sort of qualification. And this is really what started it all. I see. Well now, how did the college, uh, and indeed the University of London, uh, get into the act? Well, um, we were fortunate in that in this college some of the um, the senior technical staff had been involved in this conference which was held to discuss training of technicians and uh, again fortunately the head of the chemistry department professor hba briscoe was very interested in training technicians and immediately realized the importance of this and of course he gave every encouragement to the um, to the college to um, further these aims and um, because no technical college at that time was running courses for technicians, we decided that um, we would start a course in the University of London. Mm. And uh, University College had done a, a little bit of work on this. And in fact, they had started running some classes at, in University College for technicians. So we got together with them, and th this led to the setting up, originally, of a scheme between King's College, University College, and Imperial College, and then this gradually spread to the other schools and colleges of the university. And um, the, we, we started this scheme based on the syllabuses which had been drawn up by the conference. So, For example, um, the woodwork was done by the Royal College of Art, which happened to be in South Kensington. So that it was a very widespread scheme and uh, we managed to interest a lot of people in it. I suspect that the organizational problems must have been enormous. Uh, th this is certainly true because um, although there were many able technicians this didn't necessarily follow of course that um, they were good teachers mm -hmm. so the problem of finding suitable tutors was immense and then of course um, the difficulties of organizing a scheme which was being held at a number of different colleges in the evening uh, were enormous and uh, the difficulties of getting people there on time and setting up the classes and that it really was very difficult indeed. Well this adds up to uh, real progress for what in those days I think we called lab boys. Um, how about the position for uh, training technicians in workshops? Well um, this college, of course, being uh, largely an engineering college, uh, soon realized that uh, although science lab technicians were necessary, we also needed very badly workshop technicians. So the technician training committee in the college decided that um, something should be done about this. And they set up um, a working party under the chairmanship of Mr. Moore in mechanical engineering to look into this and make recommendations. And um, the, the recommendation was that we should have a, a fully indentured apprenticeship scheme uh, with uh, a number of lads that would not be attached to any particular department but would be under the complete control of the technician training committee so that they could move them from one department to another as they thought fit. And um, th this was put to the college uh, and much to the surprise of the committee, the college accepted this. So that the uh, apprenticeship scheme which started in 1963 in this college was the first scheme of its kind to be introduced in any university in the, in the country. Well, you have uh, named one or two names. Um, who do you view um, on the academic staff who provided the real power uh, to create this very significant Head of steam. Well, you see, I've already mentioned Professor Briscoe. There's no doubt, of course, the part that he played in it was of paramount importance because he had a very real insight into how technicians should be trained, and yes. he certainly was the driving force. 
Um, there were a number of other people. I mean, Dr. Welsh, the present uh, chairman of the Technician Training Committee, was concerned in the very early days as a member of the committee and as a tutor. Um, there was Mr. Tweeddale in metallurgy who um, started the uh, welding course that is now run. He uh, used to lecture to undergraduate and postgraduate students on welding and uh, it wasn't very difficult for him to start up a course for, for technicians. But Mr. Day, who does the practical welding, he um, was interested in welding and had been sent to a BOC course so that he was quite a suitable tutor. Um, then we, we were fortunate we had Mr. Potter in mechanical engineering who taught undergraduate and postgraduate students technical drawing. So it was a very simple thing for him to uh, set up a training scheme for the uh, apprentices on technical drawing. I see. And uh, there were a number of people like this, various members of the committee who gave valuable service to, to the college in assisting with the training. And of course, uh, one shouldn't forget Lord uh, Jackson, Sir Willis Jackson, who was the head of the electrical department and here for a time was chairman of the... Um, Technician Training Committee, he gave very valuable assistance and encouragement to, to training. Well, in conclusion, uh, Leslie, I thought you might like to draw for us a mental picture of training features, say, um, many years ago when this scheme first got underway, um, as compared with now. What um, is particular? least significant in your mind? Well I think the turning point of course was the uh, the fact that in the early days the college were not prepared to give part-time day release for training. Uh, they were prepared to uh, pay the uh, relatively small expense of sending people to technical college and that but uh, they were not prepared to give them time and of course, it was, this was really what happened when the, the University of London scheme that we'd started, uh, people were then beginning to feel that uh, they shouldn't have to do this in the evening time, in their own time, that it should be done during the day. And it was this that prompted the committee to start discussions with the, what was then the LCC and is now, now the L -E -L -E ILEA, um, to, to start the courses at Paddington Technical College because the, the college were now accepting the idea that you could send technicians away for training and, you know, in college time. So this was a very significant uh, move in that it, it did start what in effect was a proper training scheme. What is now going to happen, of course, is, is also very significant in that um, we're going over to the new uh, technical education council yes. type qualification which of course will have a fundamental effect on national examinations and a lot of the old CGLI courses and even national certificates presumably will disappear and come back in somewhat different forms so that this over the next few years there's going to be some major changes.